Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, wasn't quite sure I was going to do an intro for this video, but since this video is a little different than what I'm normally doing, because I've been posting a lot of car show videos and car show builds, this is actually showing something made from the ground up. And I couldn't figure a better place to start than at Johnson's Radiator Works because it's amazing how much goes into making one single radiator. There's a ton of parts and it's all made by hand from raw parts. And I'm pretty much used to going to like O'Reilly's or something and buying a radio for a hundred bucks, using it for a couple years and replacing it. But these are handmade, come with a great warranty. And now they're actually starting to make radiators for OBS trucks, C10s, and pretty much anything you need a radiator for, Alan and the guys can make a radiator for it. But Alan was kind enough to give me a tour. So I actually didn't use my GoPro like I normally do. I use the Fuji X-H2S, shot it like a real video. And so I'd like you guys to let me know what you think about this video because it is something different. I like to show you guys how some of this stuff's made, like custom wheels, all these crazy parts that are on cars and stuff like that and how much goes into them. And then when you go, I don't know how cars are worth this much. I mean, wait till you see all the parts to a radiator. I kind of geeked out on it. It's kind of funny how Alan actually nerds out on it a little bit too because he actually in a lot of this video is doing a lot of the build parts too, like making tubes and making fins and welding and painting and all that stuff. It's pretty cool, but he can do it from the ground up, but he has a small skeleton crew and they're still knocking out some great radiators. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and let me know what you think of it in the comments because we're planning on doing more of these. And uh, I'll let Alan uh, give you a tour and I'll stop talking. I hope you guys enjoy the video. I'm Alan Johnson, and we're here at Johnson's Radiator Works. I'm going to walk you through today and show you how the best handmade copper brass radiators made here in the USA. Um, we took over what was Walker Radiator Works, which was a company that was founded in 1932. Uh, Walker was the one behind all the innovation and technology in these radiators that's made them such a good product for the street rod, hot rod market. Um, basically, all we're doing is expanding that into some of the newer applications uh, into the 70s, 80s, and 90s to where anybody building any cars got the opportunity to have the best product available. So this is a 100 ton press that we do all of the, the tanks in, uh, top tanks and side tanks for cross flow radiators. Uh, so these are draw formed out of 040 brass stock. Um, this is a uh, grain structure that that walker found that worked the best that gave the longevity where you didn't have any problems with cracks or hardening of that product through the, through time um, but this is this is what stamping the, the tank so you're basically inserting a piece of 40 thousandths brass the top die is coming down against the bottom die and and pressing and holding that piece and then it's pushing down and draw forming that over the bottom dies this is just some of the dies that are used to make various parts. Some of them are for brackets. Um, some of them are for parts that go on every radiator so that even the uh, pressure outlet, that's something that we produce here in-house in and that goes through about a six step process to go from flat sheet to final form part. Starting of our material for the bracketry, all the, all the side bracket material is steel. We vary from one eighth gauge all the way up to 18 gauge depending on what the application is. So with our radiators we want to guarantee fit, we want to guarantee cooling, we want to guarantee reliability. So all of our radiators the bracketry is engineered to bolt up in the stock location where you're not having to modify anything on the radiator, you're not modifying core support or brackets for your car. It's truly a bolt-in application, no modifications needed. The early 30s and 40s stuff Walker changed some of those brackets around to where they were stronger and more reliable. I mean, if you, if you think about how those cars originally were done, your, your radiator is your core support, basically. So it's holding the whole front end of the vehicle up. So that radiator's got to be able to withstand the twisting and turning of the, of the chassis and not wind up breaking brackets off. So any bracket that Walker found through the years that needed to be stronger or more reinforced, that was updated and changed as, as, as it was seen to be needed. So the, the bottom tanks we're forming out of, out of 35 thousandths brass, uh, we're doing a reinforced rib stamp in these to begin with. Uh, that piece goes through several forming operations, punching the holes, notching the corners. Uh, once that's done, it's folded and the edges are, are spot welded on the resistant spot welder. And then one thing that we do a little different on the bottom tanks where a lot of other manufacturers would just solder 
the corners of the tank, solder the lower connection in. We're brazing with silver solder, all of those areas, which is adding strength, adding reliability. Uh, you're, it's, you know, it's taking us more time to do that. It's costing more money for the product material, but it's giving us a product that we know is gonna be with the car, you know, 15, 20, 25 years with no problem. Uh, so on the top tanks, after they're formed, they come to these stations where the holes are put in for, for the outlets, pressure neck, um, gets the logo, serial number, uh, and, and it's ready for install on the radiator. This machine is actually producing the copper fins to go inside the radiator, and this is one area where Vernon spent a lot of time trying different setups, different techniques to uh, get the best possible cooling in the size constraints that we have most of these radiators. So fin design has been optimized for maximum cooling efficiency, and there's louvers at each one of the fin crossings. These louvers have been computer designed and manufactured to a precise angle and length, and their location and angle on each fin is designed to eliminate air boundary buildup, which is a layer of air that insulates the fin material from the airflow. There's an average of 620,000 of these precise louvers in one of our radiators. So this is our Mechanica tube mill, and we're one of the only manufacturers in the United States that's producing tubes in-house. Most everyone else is buying tubes, so they're not controlling that quality all the way through the process. So this is starting with, with five thousandths brass off of a roll. It's coming into the tube forming section, which has actually got four stations. So you're coming in with flat material and you're coming out with a eighth inch by half inch form tube with the Pittsburgh lock seam. Once it exits the forming station, it goes through a flux bath, out of the flux bath into a solder bath. So in this section, we have about four to 5,000 pounds of solder that's running 750 degrees that the tube is flowing through that's putting the solder coat on the outside and also soldering the seam on the tube. Um, and this is running at 250 foot per minute as it's going through. It exits the solder bath and goes into the cooling station. So whenever it exits the cooling station, the, the tube is cooled off to around 90 to 100 degrees. Then it goes through a station that's actually straightening the tube um, on both planes. So whenever it comes out, it's a dead straight tube. There's no curve to the side or up and down. Then it goes through the cutting head and the cutting heads, depending on the length of the tube, we're making a cut every half second to one second, depending on the, the tube length. So this is the fixture where we assemble the cores at. So individual is hand stacking the fins and cores, you know, whatever the length of the tubes are for a particular application, number of rows of fins to the tubes. It's all hand stacked, make sure everything is flush to the front, everything's square. This is where the tolerances come in. So when we're running tubes, we're controlling the solder thickness to within plus or minus two tenths of a thousandths. Same thing for the fins. As the fins are running, we're controlling that tolerance to within plus or minus a half thousandths. So when we get to this station and the person's actually building the core, everything is the same. If we, if we build a 32 Ford radiator today, next week, next year, they're, they're identical size every time. We're not plus or minus a sixteenth of an inch or plus or minus an eighth of an inch when they're at this station final clamp up and done, height to the core, length of the tubes, it's plus or minus a 64th. So it's that close of a tolerance that we're trying to, to attain. So on this machine, it's strictly for doing the top and bottom headers. And one thing that we do a little different than some of the other manufacturers, our header is punched and dimpled. Uh, a lot of other companies will just have a punched hole in the header for the tube to go through. What the dimple does is allow us to have more solder contact area to the tube. So when this is done, you've basically got about an eighth of an inch contact of solder to that tube, to the header, giving it more strength. The companies that are just punching a hole only, you're basically edge soldering 30 thousandths to, to 5 thousandths. So this, this allows a lot more reliability dependability for years and years of use. So one, once the cores are built, clamped up and completed, the next process is gonna be baking that core. So it's first dipped into a flux bath, then it's blown out. And how much of that 
product is blown out of the core is a key component here because if we blow too much out, then we don't get the proper bond between the tubes to the fins that we need. Um, if, we, if we don't blow enough out, we don't get the proper bond of that. So once it's gone through the flux bath, it goes through a, a bake cycle at 550 degrees. When it comes out of the oven, that core is strong and reliable, just like it's a one piece. I mean, I could, I could take 200 pound men and stand on that core across a board and jump up and down on it. If we jump enough, we're gonna bend it, but we're not gonna break it, but it would take quite an effort to get it to bend. So once the core is baked, the next process is installing the top and bottom header. And these headers are such a tight fit, and, and this is for a reason that, that we're having to hammer these on with a special tool with a three pound sledgehammer. And the tube cut length being as close as it is, that particular tool sets the depth of the header onto the radiator. So that's the next step in controlling tolerances. So whenever we build a radiator for whatever particular car, we know that it's gonna fit that application. We're not gaining, we're not losing. Once the header's hammered on to the core, then it's even tightened even further by coming back and actually hammering a special tool in, between, in each tube that is swedging the fit of the tube to the header. So after the header is installed, the next step is actually soldering the header to the core. A lot of manufacturers will hand solder from the top side. Again, that's, that's giving you very limited strength and, and iffy reliability because you're only getting from one side. We're actually dipping the header. So part of the control process on length of everything, we have to have the correct amount of tube sticking through the header, correct level of solder in the header dip pot. So whenever that is, is inserted in, it's actually wicking the solder up the tube and actually going to the top side of the header as well. So you're getting a full 1 8 inch contact of solder on each tube to the header. So at, at this stage, the radiator is ready for final assembly. You're going through and soldering the, the bottom tank on, top tank, brackets. If it's a cross flow radiator, you're doing side to end tanks and top and bottom brackets. Um, this is a hand done process. It's a, it's a very delicate process to wind up with the, the strength that's needed and the solder look like it's just been wiped with your finger. I mean, I'm very particular with how they look. Um, from my background of building cars for 30 years, I'm as particular about the finished look as I am the performance and the reliability of the product. Once the radiator is final assembled, everyone is pressure tested. We pressure test at 20 pounds. We recommend a 16 pound cap. So we're actually pressure testing four pounds over what the recommended amount is just to ensure that there's no leaks. <clears throat> so once the radiator's final assembled, it's washed inside, washed outside, blow dry. It goes into this oven for final drying and it, so it, there's no residue left inside the radiator or outside the radiator. Once everything's prepped, it's hung up on the conveyor system and, and goes through our paint process. Packing, we're using a, a two-part foam it, for every radiator so we know whenever it's received by a customer they're getting a product that's not had any damage, no fins pinched, nothing that's done to it. Um, so doing the spray foam is the best way we could find for doing our packaging. I'm holding in my hand the only parts that we don't manufacture in-house out of raw material to produce the best USA made radiator available. And that's the drain petcock, the bung for the drain petcock, and the overflow tube. Bung. Thanks again for taking the time to stop by and look at what we do here at Johnson's Radiator Works.